Great. So, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this new webinar from THE Students Webinars. Uh, my name is Karen and I'm going to be uh, here today representing THE Student. We are uh, today having a seminar or webinar with San Francis College. And we are joined by Emily Dorso. She is a representative from this prestigious university and prestigious institution. And is going to talk in, to you about like different uh, study opportunities in New York and how will you be able to apply to their programs and so on. So Emily, thank you very much for joining us today. And thank you very much to all the people who is here watching us. We're going to have like a brief uh, Q&A session at the end of the presentation. So don't uh, be shy, feel free to send all your questions and drop them at the Q&A box here at the bottom of the screen. Emily, thank you very much for being here. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining the webinar today. Um, as Karen mentioned, um, my name is Emily Dorso. I am the Assistant Director of International Admissions at St. Francis College here in New York City. Uh, so it's a pleasure to be speaking with you all today. Um, I actually was recently in Brazil. So if you're joining me from Brazil, it was a pleasure to be there just a couple of months ago. I was in Sao Paulo, Rio de Janeiro, and also Parachi, um, and I loved it. So if you're joining me from that part of that world, welcome. And if you're joining me from anywhere else, welcome as well. We're so excited to have you and get to speak more about St. Francis College. So I'm going to get started. And as we mentioned, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to drop them in the Q&A and I will answer them at the end. Um, so I want to start by, of course, setting the scene. So these pictures may look familiar to you. Um, this is New York City. Um, you'll see in the picture on the left, it's the Brooklyn Bridge and also on the right, the famous Brooklyn Bridge in the middle of a beautiful view of Manhattan. So if you were to study at St. Francis College, these are images you could see with your own eyes. Our campus is actually only an eight minute walk from this famous bridge and landmark. So I think it's important for students to get a feel for you know, where they would be if they were walking the streets of their future campus. Well, if you chose to study at St. Francis College, these pictures, that would be your day-to-day -day life, right? These would be the streets of your campus. So with that in mind, I'm going to share a little bit more about St. Francis College, SFC for short, in numbers, right? So we have over 70 undergraduate majors, right? So that's the program, right? If you're studying a bachelor's degree, for people who have completed high school and are looking for that next degree. So over 70 different undergraduate majors to choose from. Later in the presentation, I'll show you more specifics about our business programs, our health science programs, even communications with concentrations in, in film and in performing arts. And we also have an honors program um, for our international students. So students are eligible to participate in our honors program. We do also have graduate degree programs for students who have completed their bachelor's and are looking for a master's. Um, overall, our total population at St. Francis College is approximately 2,600 students, right? 2,600. So that's actually a smaller school for the United States. Um, but I actually think that's a really big strength because you may know this, New York City has over 8 million people, <laughs> over 8 million people. It's the largest city in the United States. So if you want a lot of people, you walk outside campus and believe me, you will find them. But in your classes or on campus, it's a lot more intimate of a community, right? Smaller class sizes, you'll see here, there's a 16 to one student to faculty ratio. 
that means your class sizes will be small. The average class size at St. Francis College is only 18 students. So easy to make connections with professors, with other American and international students. And you'll see here on this map that our international students, um, they come from over 75 countries. All of those different dots you see on the map here, that's where our students come from. So around the world, just as diverse as New York City itself, which we find to be a really great strength for us. Of course, to know more specifically about our location. So St. Francis College is specifically located in downtown Brooklyn. Many of you may have heard of Brooklyn from the movies, from film. Well, that's right where we're located. Here on this map, you'll see um, it's the lower part of Manhattan. That's right where Wall Street is. Our campus is only a 10 minute subway ride from Wall Street, the famous business area of the United States and New York specifically. Our residence hall, which I'll show you later in the presentation, students who are getting their undergraduate degrees can live in our residence halls. It's right on the East River, overlooking the Manhattan skyline, and only a 15-minute walk from our campus. So very easy to get around a New York City neighborhood if you were to study at SFC. Of course, you also need to see where you'd be studying, not just outside of the building, but inside of the building. So here you'll see pictures of our brand new campus. It was just opened, we just relocated back last September. So these are some pictures of our classrooms, of our auditorium, and of our common spaces for students. Um, this space has been maximized for students to enjoy time studying together on campus, getting meals. You'll see in the picture on the right-hand side, um, that's where our dining hall is. So students will sit on those stairs in between classes with their coffee, with their lunch, to connect with each other and then go off to their, their next class. Um, here are some more pictures on the next slide. If you were to enter our building, this is what you would be greeted with. So as you can see, beautiful space right in downtown Brooklyn. As I mentioned earlier, we also do have a residence hall. This is, of course, really important for international students. Some of you will be traveling very far distances and want to make sure that you feel comfortable in your living space. So I want to let you know that we have a brand new residence hall located right near what's called the Brooklyn Promenade. So as I said, this overlooks the Manhattan skyline. You'll see in the picture on the right side, the view outside that window. So you're looking at the Freedom Tower, the river, and the whole skyline of downtown Manhattan. Only a 15 minute walk from campus. There is 24 hour security. Um, I know that students, when they leave home, they want to make sure they're safe. So our residence hall does have 24 hour security. Our campus building also has security as well. Um, our residence hall has Wi-Fi available to students. There are communal kitchens available and there's even a rooftop deck. So there will be special events for our students who live on campus. If they go to the rooftop for events, they can overlook the Manhattan skyline and get to meet other students. Um, so it's a really great way to build community and be closely located to our school when you're attending classes. Of course, we hope that if you are going to study abroad, not only are you thinking about the cool things you'll be doing outside of class in New York City, we also hope you're thinking about what degree you want to study academically. So we have over 70 undergraduate degree programs. So those would either be a Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science degree. This is the first degree our students complete after they complete high school. Of course, because we're located in New York City, business programs are very popular. You'll see here that we have accounting, economics. Many of our economic students will concentrate in international economics, finance, public policy. Um, we have a management program that's very popular. 
finance. All of these students, of course, in only a 10 minute subway ride can be at Wall Street or some of these big giant accounting firms that exist in Manhattan. So very easy to make connections with these very famous companies because most organizations and businesses you've heard of have some type of headquarters or office in New York. So if you're thinking about potential internship opportunities in the future or networking opportunities, New York is an incredible place to be regardless of your industry. Right? You also will see here a lot of different health science programs. One of our top majors on campus is biology. Um, we also have majors in nursing, public health, um, health promotion and sciences, healthcare management, exercise and movement science. So there's a lot of diversity in our health science programs. And as I mentioned, our brand new building, the seventh floor is dedicated to all different STEM facilities. So brand new labs, robots that aid these students in their education. So top of the line technology for students looking at these programs. Maybe you're not interested in STEM programs like biology, chemistry, mathematics, economics. Maybe you're more interested in the humanities. We have programs like that for you too, right? So we do have programs in communication arts, right? So many of our students will concentrate in digital media, film, broadcasting, and journalism, for example. History, sociology, criminal justice, um, international and cultural studies, psychology. So being a liberal arts college, we have many different programs to choose from for high school students looking to get their bachelor's degree after they complete high school. You'll also see that we have graduate degree programs. So students who have already completed their first degree but are interested in getting a master's, we do have different programs. You'll see here accounting, psychology, management, creative writing, exercise and sports science. Our MSM management program has a variety of concentrations, including information technology and business analytics. So there's great diversity in that program as well, if you're looking at getting a master's degree. Um, I wanted to highlight a few of our great faculty and students here on this page, um, both of whom are from Brazil. Um, so here you'll see Dr. Olivia. Um, her bio is right there. She is a current SFC professor and faculty member. She teaches our economics courses, um, and she's also the associate director for the Institute for Global Engagement as well as the Brazil faculty coordinator for SFC International. Um, and below you'll see Tadeo, he'll be in our presentation at a later point. I'll share a little bit more about his story. Um, he was a, he actually is graduating today, which is why he couldn't join us. Today is our commencement ceremony. We're very excited to celebrate our new SFC graduates graduating at Coney Island. They just graduated an, about an hour ago, um, Tadeo included. Um, he was originally from Rio de Janeiro, um, and he is currently an intern at Madison Square Garden. That's where the New York Knicks basketball team plays, as well as where most of the famous New York concerts happen. So I think that that's a great thing to show where our students are and how their SFC experience has affected them. Um, so at this time, Karen, I don't know if you're able to pull up um, our video, but I wanted to, in addition to spotlighting these two, two people, our Brazilian faculty member and our Brazilian students, um, I believe we also have a video um, that we just want to briefly show to share a little bit about um, our student experiences. So I'm just going to stop sharing my screen for a moment so that you can watch this quick one minute video of a current student um, who uh, is a great addition to our community.
I'm not sure if it's just me who can't hear. It may be a technical issue, um, but I can share a little bit of what Beatrice is sharing um, if the video isn't going to work for us. Um, let's try one more time. And if it doesn't work, I'll just give a brief overview and a summary of it. No worries. It's supposed to be working. Uh, if someone, if any of our attendees here who please let us know if they can hear the video, it will also work and we really appreciate that. So I'll try to play it again and see if it's, if it's working. One second. Hi everyone, my name is Beatriz Amarante. I'm from Sao Paulo, Brazil, and I'm studying health promotion in sciences with a minor in public health. Uh, at St. Francis, I'm the president of Make a Difference, the volunteer and community service club. And I also work as a student assistant for the Office of Academic Affairs in graduate studies. Uh, what I love the most about St. Francis is that it just feels like everyone is a big family. So in the classrooms, the And I also love the activity periods. Everyone just gets to hang out with their friends for a couple of hours, eat and participate in the club's meetings together. And what I love the most about New York City is how culturally diverse it is. You can find people from everywhere in the world. Plus in the summer, you get to do some cool activities outside. Muitos gracias para todo mundo. Ciao, ciao. Thank you so much for that. Um, Karen for jumping in. Um, so yeah, Beatrice is one of our great students on SFC's campus. Um, and so we hope that uh, we'll get to see you there in a future semester. Um, and so as she mentioned, um, her classroom experience has been really special. Um, earlier, I shared that average class size is only 18 students. So those small class sizes means close relationships with your professors and that you'll have a really strong network of support, which I think when studying is truly important, but particularly as an international student. Here on this slide, you'll see some of those other academic spaces for our students. Um, as you'll see in the top left, another great view of New York City, and in the top right, some of those great new STEM facilities. Um, our students also do have study abroad opportunities as well. And here you'll see, if you remember Tadeo, that earlier student I shared from Rio, um, Tadeo is a great example of some of those on and off campus opportunities for our students. If you choose to study at St. Francis College, you have access to the New York City subway system, the bus system, walking around, taxis, Uber, the train. Um, so really easy to get around. Um, of course, there are on-campus job opportunities for students. Many of our international students do participate often not in that first year, but in later years, they'll look for on-campus job opportunities to gain work experience, to gain, um, you know, to make connections. And of course, there are internship opportunities as well. As I mentioned, Tadeo um, is interning at Madison Square Garden. You'll see he is featured here on the basketball stadium floor of the New York Knicks. Um, so a really great opportunity for him. He started um, studying business as an undergrad and then chose to continue as a master's student and is finishing his master's in management and graduated today. So. This is just one example of how you can connect your SFC experience on campus with greater career and job opportunities off campus as well. So of course, the big question always is about cost, right? So here I can tell you approximately um, our annual academic tuition per year is around $27,500. You'll see on the slide. 
And then if you choose to live on campus, which it's optional, our undergrads do not need to live on campus, though we do uh, recommend it and encourage it if possible. Um, so that would bring the total both to study and live in New York City to around $43,500. However, that of course is before our competitive scholarships. Uh, we do provide our international students scholarships, so I want to highlight that now for you. So first you'll see if you're studying in one of those STEM majors, so mathematics, psychology, biology, economics, if you are accepted, if you meet our requirements, you would automatically receive over $7,000 in tuition scholarship. So if accepted, there is no extra application required, um, you would get that $7,000 academic tuition scholarship. So instead of paying that $43,500 in tuition and housing, you would instead pay approximately $36,000, right? So that's $36,000 per year to both live and study in New York City. Now, if you're interested in studying history or communication arts with a concentration in advertising and public relations, um, you could receive over $8,000 in tuition scholarship. Again, no extra application required. Um, you would just need to apply and be accepted. And this $8,000 scholarship would be automatically applied, which would bring the cost of tuition and housing to approximately $35,000 to both live and study in New York City. I want to also encourage students to remember um, that there are additional scholarship opportunities depending on the time of year. Um, our scholarship day competition for this fall 2023, which starts on September 6th, has closed. Um, but students, our first year new freshmen who are entering in the fall, if you are accepted and if you have a GPA of 85 out of 100 or higher, um, you would be invited to participate in a scholarship day competition. Um, so that would include writing an essay, attending a scholarship day event virtually for international students, and completing an interview. You can compete to receive one of four full academic tuition scholarships, right? That's housing is not included, but these students could receive up to one of these four awards. So that's really exciting. Even if you don't win one of those awards, you could receive a little more scholarship on top of what you would have already received in that acceptance letter. Our competition normally finishes by March. Um, the deadlines normally are beginning of February. So if you're thinking of applying next for next fall, fall 2024, make sure you apply before the end of this year so you can be considered for our scholarship day competition. As I mentioned earlier, we do have that honors program as well, um, where honors students can participate in special field trips, special study abroad opportunities, attend regional honors conferences. It's a great addition to a CV or resume. Um, that's for students who have a 90 GPA out of 100 or higher. So I'm sure many students are asking, how do I apply, right? So our admissions requirements. So we operate on what we call rolling admissions. What does that mean? That means that we offer admissions throughout the year. So right now today, we are still accepting applications for this fall, fall 2023, which begins on September 6th. Um, so if you're interested, we would love for you to apply this fall if you've already completed high school. Um, and this is how you would apply if you are an undergraduate student, right? A student looking to pursue their bachelor's degree. Um, you would consider to start, um, you'll complete your online application. You can do that in one of two places. You can either do it at sfc.edu apply, which you see in the first bullet point here, 
or you can submit your application on the Common App. We do accept, we do accept the Common App as well. After you submit your online application, your next step for undergraduates is you're going to email certain documents to international at sfc.edu. So what documents do you need? Well, first, of course, your official high school transcripts. Right, so they need to be in English, of course. Um, so make sure that they're in English. You can have your high school directly email those transcripts to international at sfc.edu in order to be considered as well as proof of your high school completion, like a diploma. And then you yourself can email proof of English proficiency to the same email address, international at sfc.edu. We accept many different exams. You'll see that here on the right hand side. We accept TOEFL, IELTS, Duolingo, um, Pearson, ITEP, many different exams, including some students ask, well, I study an IB curriculum. We also would accept a grade of six or higher for English language. Um, so if you don't see it here, always send an email to international at sfc.edu and we can take a look and see if your English would be accepted. Also, we could potentially waive this if you attend a fully English speaking high school. Um, that means that your medium of instruction was in English. Um, so we would just need a documentation of that from your school as well. So to summarize, again, that online application, you'd need, we'd need your transcripts and we need your English proficiency. Undergrads, right? So students pursuing a bachelor's degree, we do not require SAT scores, which is great news. No SATs, no ACTs. The only students that need to complete this are nursing students. Right, so that's great news. Um, we also do not have an application fee, um, so that's important to note. Um, graduate students looking to pursue a master's, there are going to be some more specific requirements depending on your program. So of course, just make sure that you visit our website and you can email graduate at sfc.edu um, for more information. Um, so you'll see that here at the bottom. So we enroll students for undergrads twice per semester, either in the fall semester, which normally begins at the beginning of September, and in January, which we call our spring semester. So normally in the middle of January, we enroll students. So we are starting to accept applications for this spring, which begins in January 2024. So today, you would be eligible to apply for this fall, um, which begins in September, or this spring, which would begin in January 2024. So hopefully this helps clarify um, the admissions requirements. We do not require SATs. We do not require an essay or letters of recommendation. So finally, I just want to share some um, important contacts. Of course, we have an office, uh, International Student Services. They provide students I-20 and visa assistance. We understand that this is a stressful process, so we do have that support. Here, you'll also see my contact information as well as my colleagues' contact information who work in order to support our international students. So just to wrap up, because I know that everybody's very busy and I want to make sure we have time for many of the questions that came in, I want to thank you all for being here and just remind you that New York City is waiting for you. Right? St. Francis College is a diverse community. It's close and we are located right in downtown Brooklyn with great connections to Manhattan, Brooklyn, and other areas of New York and the US. If you've ever thought about pursuing a degree, studying in New York City, living your dream like you see in the movies, um, SFC is a great option. There is support here for our students who are interested in pursuing different academic endeavors, different professional endeavors, as well as connecting with other American students and international students and faculty from around the world. So we really hope to see your applications for this fall or September. 
Um, I'm looking forward to seeing some of the questions you have and hope to see you on campus in person very soon. Great. Thank you very much, Emily, for your brilliant presentation. And thank you to all the viewers and all the students who are here attending this event. We are going to start with our Q&A session today. Uh, we have a lot of questions, so that's that's great. So the first question that we have here says, um, hello, thanks for the webinar. How affordable is New York? Great. Yeah, it was like for international students. Great question. So we get this question a lot, of course, that the people wonder about New York City and affordability. And of course, we understand that affordability is key when selecting a higher education institution. Of course, New York City is one of the largest and most popular cities in the entire world. So as you know, from all cities, no matter where you're from, they do tend to be more expensive. Um, however, I can tell you that we are one of the most affordable private schools in New York City. Um, so if you've ever had a dream of studying here, St. Francis is the most affordable option for you. Um, that being said, um, as you can see in earlier slides, I shared some of that tuition information, housing information. Students are welcome and often do, you know, after maybe a year or two, they connect with their friends that they've made in communities and they go off and choose to live off campus with roommates. Um, so there are options for students who are looking to pursue different, different options. And it depends on the student. Right? Some students who want to go to all the concerts, all the baseball games, all the restaurants, right? There are times that that costs money, but also in New York, there are a lot of affordable options. Summer is a great time to be here, a lot of free events to participate in. So I think it really depends on the student. Perfect. Thank you very much, Emily. Uh, we have another question about will there be like about accommodation and like everything related to budgeting for an international student so it says will there be any help in finding accommodation and we have another one related to it that says how much will it cost to stay at the residential at the university of residences okay good questions um so and let's make sure I get all of these. So I'll start with the residence hall question. Um, so we certainly provide you assistance if you want to live on campus. Um, so that would be a separate application. Um, and you that tuition would be approximately $16,000 per year. In the United States, we pay per semester normally. Um, so each semester is around four months we do have payment plan options for students. So if you don't want to pay the full semester at the beginning, um, you are able to sign up for a payment plan and pay, for example, four installments throughout the semester or five installments throughout the semester instead of paying in full. But that housing amount would be $16,000 for the year, approximately $8,000 per semester. Um, if you want to live off comp, off campus, that would be, you know, your choice, of course. Um, we don't have specific off campus housing recommendations. However, there does exist an international student Facebook group where our international SFC students will talk with each other about different opportunities. So you can speak to your fellow students about that if it's something that you are considering. Um, I feel like there was another in question in there, Karen, that I missed. Is there something I missed there? Uh, no, I think that, that that one covers like both of the questions, so no worries. I think Great. we can move on um, with the next one that says, what kind of facilities does the university offer? Do you have like any kind of, I don't know, like sports facilities or media labs or what kind of, yeah, like tools could you give us, could you give to the students? Great question. Um, so that brand new campus I mentioned has beautiful new facilities. Um, there is an innovation lab 
that's a really special place for students. Um, there's also a focus on entrepreneurial skills. So students who are interested in learning more about entrepreneurship, how to be an entrepreneur, there's a focus on that. There's a 3D printer. Uh, so students do a lot of really special projects in this lab, in this innovation lab and have access to top-notch facilities. Um, in some of those pictures, you may have also, if you remember, saw that the health sciences, so if you're interested in studying any sort of biology, chemistry, the lab facilities are all brand new. Um, and as a student, of course, you would be enrolled in those classes, in those spaces. There are many different study spaces for students, um, both that are private and also in common spaces. So. That would be good depending on you know what type of um, study environment you are looking for. We also have a different radio lab on um, on campus. So students who they have a radio station and students who are interested in broadcasting have this it's this really cute space um, right in the middle of our campus to use as well. So maybe that I'm not sure what if that student was looking for anything specific, but those are just some examples of the spaces you have. And because we're a New York City school, you need to remember you don't just have access to our spaces, but you have access to New York City spaces. So if let's say we don't have it, take the subway and in 25 minutes or a half hour, you can be at the Metropolitan Museum of Art or, um, you know, near the Opera House. So if we don't have it, New York City has it. Great, thank you very much. And I think we have another question related to like all those extracurricular activities and different like activities that you can or that the students can develop in, in the city. So it says, can I join clubs to meet new students interested in some similar activities? And it also says, do you offer any kind of extracurricular activities for international students? Great question. I love when students want to get involved even before they've shown up. Uh, the answer is yes, of course. We have a large amount of international um, organizations, students that both um, participate in extracurricular activities as well as like sororities and fraternity life. Um, we have different clubs for different groups around the world. For example, we have an organization for students from Albania specifically. We also have a Brazilian club on campus um, and then different clubs for different interests. We definitely recommend participating in them to meet other students, um, both American and international in order to make connections and you know, pursue something that you enjoy. So that's the on-campus opportunity. Again, if you're looking for something that maybe doesn't exist specifically on SFC's campus, of of course, it will exist somewhere in New York City. I don't know if I've ever heard of anyone finding some type of activity, whether it's, you know, comics, anime, a specific sport, a specific type of art performance that someone in New York isn't doing. So if you don't have it on your campus, you sure you can find it off campus. Awesome, thank you very much. So now we're moving into financial questions. We, I mean, we know that you already gave us a few information about this, but there is some people asking again about how can I gain any financial aid or a scholarship, or is there any scholarship available for international or Brazilian students in a specific? Um, that's it. And yeah. how are the fees as well? Yes. So I'm going to review these slides because I think the visual is really helpful. Um, so, of course, um, tuition is a concern when students are choosing an institution. We understand that. Um, our academic tuition is approximately $27,500 per academic year, right? So we talk about it per year. Um, and then if you want to live on campus, you're looking at approximately 16000 That brings your cost to around $43,500 per academic year. That's before scholarship. We do offer our students scholarship opportunities. Um, the most common scholarship students will receive depends on the major you're looking to pursue. So if you're pursuing chemistry, mathematics, psychology, anything in the STEM related majors, 
if you are accepted into our school, there is no separate scholarship application to receive this scholarship, which would be a $7,000 scholarship for your academic tuition. So instead of paying that $27,500, you're looking at more like $20,000 per year. So that's $10,000 in academic tuition for one semester, $10,000 in the second semester. And as I mentioned, students can sign up for payment plans on four or five date different installments. Right. If you're looking to pursue something like history, sociology, those non-STEM majors, um, you could receive over $8,000 in scholarship, bringing the cost of your academic tuition plus on-campus housing to approximately $35,000. So those are the most common scholarships for students. If you're accepted, no extra application required. This would be applied to your acceptance letter. And it's for students who are entering in either fall or spring. And it applies to both freshmen and transfer students. Keep in mind, our graduate students are a different situation because they pay per credit. Right now, I'm talking about undergraduate students. Um, if you apply in for the fall semester so this has closed for 2023 but if you want to apply for 2024 and you're a high achieving student with an 85 out of 100 gpa or higher you would be invited to scholarship day um, where there's an essay an interview and if you participate you can um, compete for an additional award right so additional scholarship awards I hope that that answers the questions about scholarships and affordability. Great, thank you very much. I think we have one question related to this and that will probably students help in terms of like payment plans and so on. And it says, uh, would I be able to work alongside my studies? Good question. So, um, of course, the United States government has regul specific regulations for F1 students. Um, so students are eligible to participate in on campus jobs. We just always recommend that a student doesn't rely on this funding for paying their tuition, right, because you don't want to depend on that. We want to make sure you can safely and securely live in the United States and study and have the proper funding. So even if you um, are able to secure an on-campus job opportunity, that won't be considered in the unit for the United States funding requirements, right? So you need to prove a certain amount of funding in order to be approved to get that I-20 document and also ultimately get that student visa to come to the US. So that's a federal regulation from the United States government. That being said, a lot of our international students do work on campus. Um, of course, that work cannot be guaranteed. Um, and it's not typically common in that first year. Normally, it's in that second, third and fourth year. But students can, of course, work on campus and often do. Awesome, thank you very much. So let's move into language. So it says, what's the minimum level of English required? Required, And also, do you accept Duolingo? You mentioned that yes, but you could please repeat it for our viewers. Of course. So you'll see on the right-hand side, our minimum scores. We do accept Duolingo. A minimum score of 95 or higher. Um, you'll see our minimum TOEFL score is 70, minimum IELTS of 6, um, ITEP 3.7. So those are some examples of the English requirement, the English exams that we accept. Awesome. Thank you very much. So we have also different questions about how to apply. So it says here, how can I apply? And um, is there any possibility to do like a dual degree? Good question. So to apply, very simple. Go on our website, sfc.edu slash apply. 
sfc.edu slash apply. Um, I can also um, drop that in the chat here um, if that's helpful. Um, and this would be where you would submit your um, application. You can also submit your application through the Common App. That's always going to be step one, whether you're a freshman, a transfer, or a graduate student. After that, the requirements are different. So here detailed, you'll see the undergraduate requirements. Again, those are for students who have just finished high school and are looking for their first degree. We will need your high school transcripts and your English proficiency emailed to international at sfc.edu. Right, so pretty simple. Graduates are going to have more specific requirements, of course, depending on the major. So you can email graduate at sfc.edu. You'll see the email there at the bottom of the slide. Um, and you can find out your more specific requirements there. And there was another question in there that I think I, I missed. Oh, dual degree. Um, so students who want to do a dual degree, we do have dual degree programs. We also have um, four plus one programs. So for example, psychology, instead of going um, to get your bachelor's in four years and then getting a master's in another two, you do your bachelor's degree with us and then one year and then you graduate with both a bachelor's and a master's in psychology. Um, we do have students do majors and minors. So there's a lot of flexibility. Great, thank you very much. Is there any deadline for the application for the next intakes? Yes, so our September intake is our next intake. So that's our fall semester. It begins September 6th, uh, 2023, um, is our next group of students coming through. And you are still welcome to apply. So we operate on a rolling admissions basis. Um, the deadline would be to apply before August. So before August 1st, you want to make sure you have your application in for the fall. Our applications for spring 2024, which begin this January, is also open. Awesome. Thank you very much. Here says, are there any short courses or diplomas for international students? Good question. So that really varies from year to year. So I would recommend um, emailing international at sfc.edu if you have more specific questions. Great, thank you very much. Uh, we have a couple of questions related to, I guess, career development. So it says, what kind of networking opportunity does the university offer? And will there be a potential to meet employers? How That's long, a, sorry, sorry, how no, long sorry. can I after my studies there? Great questions, these are really good. Um, I would say um, something that's important to to look at. I'm gonna actually um, I'm gonna zoom out actually for a second, and then I'm gonna pull up a slide um, of our past student um, because our past student Tadeo um, was a great example of a student who used um, who used their SFC degree um, to you know, move them ahead and get some great professional experience. We have a Center for Career Services on campus. Our Career Services Center brings in dozens of employers each year. Um, some really famous names that you would have heard of in all different industries, health, business, um, humanities, international relations, um, that students can meet with employers on our campus, um, whether that's through a job fair, through an information session, so our students can connect with those employers and organizations directly. That's really important to us. So there are those special events that we offer. And of course, there's a lot of business and organization diversity because there are so many of them in New York. In addition to that, our students can always enter the Career Center if they want help on their resume, writing a cover letter, practicing for interviews, preparing for networking events, practicing their, you know, their networking skills, their interview skills. So those services are definitely available on campus and our students often utilize them, such as Tadeo, which I shared here, who ended up through his academic 
and personal uh, experiences getting this internship with Madison Square Garden, which is a really impressive name that people around the world know. So um, definitely great opportunity for, for SFC, um, SFC students. One, one really common question about like career development and life after studies is, uh, will there be a possibility of the student, like for the students to apply for a postgraduate visa? So we do have CPT and OPT requirements. That depends on if a student is an undergrad or a grad and what degree they study, what the amount of time can can be. Um, so that would depend on each situation. But yes, we do have many students who participate in both CPT and OPT um, looking to extend their, their studies and internship opportunities in the US. Awesome. Thank you very much. We have two last questions. One of them says, do you offer advice in terms of visa application? So we do have um, our S ISS office that I mentioned, um, International Student Services, that can help advise for um, visa assistance. Um, so we're happy to answer any questions that students have about the visa. We also have a great website that has a lot of frequently asked questions and resources there as well that it's always available to students. Great. And the last one says, does the university accept volunteers working and serving them? So volunteers, um, like to be a volunteer at the school? Yeah, I assume that's why they're senior. Okay. Um, so at this time, we don't normally accept volunteers, but um, always feel free to ask um, any questions at international at sfc.edu, and I'm happy to look into it further. Great. Emily, thank you very much for your presentation once again. That was all the questions that we had. Uh, I don't know if you have any last thought or any last word you would like to say, any last advice for the students who are looking for the next team takes. Yes, thank you. Well, first, I just want to, again, thank the, thank any student that or parent that was on this call today. I appreciate your time that you took to learn more about St. Francis College here in downtown Brooklyn, New York. Um, I've just added my email address to the chat here. Um, I want to encourage you if you have any questions. My name is Emily. I am happy to answer them. I'm also going to go back to um, the slide with my contact information here. Um, I'm in the bottom right. Um, so if you want to send me an email or a message on WhatsApp, I'm happy to communicate further. Um, we are always looking to add incredible members to our SFC community here in New York City. So if you have ever considered getting your degree in New York, and are looking to grow your academic, professional, and personal endeavors, we are here and waiting for you. Please know that I am happy to answer application questions, programmatic questions, degree questions. So um, reach out if you need anything. And we hope to very soon see you in New York City at SFC. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Emily, for your presentation once again. And thank you to all the people who were here joining us during this uh, webinar. We encourage you to contact Emily and the rest of the admissions team of San Francisco College. So we really hope to see you anytime soon. And best of luck. Bye, Bye everyone.